Genesis 10:27 and Hor Daram as a Dikta Dikba. You know, again, just a series of names may seem unimportant to us, but this is what the earth was people and then populated the earth. We'll be in first Samuel eight. Like, so you know, I'll figure out where. Six through ten. Hmm. No. Ten through fifteen. Ten through fifteen. Second verse Samuel eight. First Samuel eight, ten through fifteen. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord. To the people who asked the king of him. Who asked the king of him. So he's responding to the people. Telling them exactly what God had told him. This was his purpose as king. As, as prophet. And they were wanting the king. And there was warning behind it. But the people didn't care. But God shares this with us even when we don't care and aren't willing to listen we have his scripture a lot of people have it never open it but it was still given verse 11 and he said this will be the manner of the king who shall reign over you he will take your sons and appoint them for himself his chariots to be his horsemen and some shall run before the chariots. And so the king was going to use their people. Um, this would not just be done by Saul, but other generations, good kings, it would have been better to serve. Um, because then they'd be blessed because they were treated well. But bad kings would take advantage and mistreat and practically almost slave -like labor. Um... So this is what they'd have to deal with. It would be having a king would be good if the king seeked after the Lord, but many of them didn't, and it was a bad thing. Verse um, twelve, and he will appoint captains over thousands and captains over fifty, and will set them to ear his ground and reap his harvest. And make his instruments of war and instruments of chariots. So he was going to appoint military leaders. No problem here because this should have been done anyway. But he was going to have people work his land. Now again, like I said, a good king, this would be great. Because they'd be well taken for a while themselves. But a bad king wouldn't. Verse 13. And he said, and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. Um, this was often done. Any outside marriage would be to for peace treaty purposes. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. Now, the ripple effect of the king being good. You give this land. A righteous king would take it away because 
of wickedness. One well, this person did this crime, he needs to be punished if we're giving my servant this land. But a bad king would be like, I don't care who this person is. And this servant he wants this land, so he wants it. And oftentimes causing a lot more problems that would never really be resolved by doing that. And he will take the tenth of your seed and your vineyards and give them give to his officers and to his servants a tenth. I think there's a reason why there's a tenth. This kind of puts the king on the same level as God, which means they're going to be given now 20% of their earnings away because they're wanting a king. You know, when we seek our will, it seems like the best thing going. But in all honesty, we don't see the loss we truly have. They didn't see the loss they were truly having by gaining a king.